Hey everyone, Tactics here with my guide to the final boss of the Nurabar Palace Raid, Queen Anserac on Normal and Heroic Difficulty. In this video, I'll be going over various boss mechanics as well as the strategy that my guild used to defeat this boss on Heroic Difficulty in the first week of the patch to hopefully help you and your group get there ahead of the curve achievement. If you're looking for info on the other bosses in the raid, be sure to check out my guides over on my channel, which will include mythic boss guides starting next week. And if you find those useful, make sure you do subscribe. Otherwise, let's hop into phase one, which is all about area denial here, as many of her abilities create pools of acid on the ground. To start, you want to rip Bloodlust on a pole and drag the boss to the outer ring of the platform as she will cast her tank combo shortly after the fight begins. This starts with the Liquify ability, a big nature and physical hit that applies a 30 second dot and physical damage amp to the current tank, shoots swirlies out at random players, and spawns a large pool of acid beneath the boss, hence why you want her towards the edge. On Heroic, those swirlies at random players also create more acid pools, so you want to bait these also on the outer ring of the platform, ideally not in front of your group though. When Liquify happens, the other tank should taunt, as it's followed by the Feast ability, which is a large physical hit and healing absorb on the active tank. On Heroic, the amount of healing absorbed is increased based on the damage you do take, so be aware of this effect and mitigate accordingly. When taunting here, you also want to pull the boss out of that acid puddle she just formed, but still keep her on that outer ring of the platform as the goal here is to slowly fill in the path behind Anserac with puddles and other forms of area denial and just rotate around in a circle. Speaking of other mechanics, most important one is probably Reactive Toxin. This is a debuff that targets one random player on Normal and two on Heroic, causing them to explode in an 8-yard AoE, dropping a small Reactive Froth Circle on the ground in the process. Shortly after this Froth appears, a larger circle forms around it, and you want your entire raid to get into these larger circles without touching that small Froth in the center, as doing so causes the Froth to explode, which knocks anyone in that larger circle into the air and forward, applying a split damage dot to them. While this sounds pretty bad, you can actually use it to help you avoid the Venom Nova ability, which Anserac casts at 100 energy. This deals lethal damage to players near the boss and then shoots out a ring that applies heavy dot damage to anyone who touches it, but if you time the detonation of that froth, you can shoot your entire raid over this ring, avoiding the damage entirely. A couple of things to note about this. First, the player who touches the froth gets a dot and then explodes in a 15 yard AOE after six seconds. So they need to be ready to move away from your group after getting over the acid Nova ring. This also applies a debuff to them that increases the damage of that dot by 1000% for the rest of this phase. And since this ability happens three times throughout phase one, you need to have a rotation of three different frost soakers on normal and six on heroic. Speaking of heroic, since there are two different froths here, you have a couple options with how you plan to deal with them. First, you could pre-assign your raid evenly to each soak. However, if you were ever off your split by even a single player, whether they died or accidentally just went to the wrong soak, the soak with less players in it will likely die unless you stack up raid defensives. Alternatively, you could instead opt to do a Venn diagram with the Frost and place your entire raid inside the overlap. This eliminates the potential for a bad split. However, it has its own issues as your Frost detonators need to hit their Frost at the same time. Otherwise, the raid will be knocked out of one of the soaks entirely which, as you can imagine, is pretty bad. Because we killed the boss with a relatively low eye level at 605-ish, we were pretty scared of losing players throughout this phase, so we opted to go for the Venn Diagram strategy. However, there are pros and cons to both, so if you're worried more about the coordination required for that strategy and you're less concerned about dying to rot damage or other sources of damage in this phase, go for the two separate group strategy instead. In terms of timing for the overlap strategy, we had our assigned soakers watch the Acid Nova cast, touching their froth when it hits zero seconds. In terms of where to place these frosts, you also want to drop them on the outer ring of the platform since when the Acid Nova hits them, they will turn into Acid Puddles. Also note that some Acid Waves will shoot out of these frosts upon turning into those Acid Pools, so make sure your group is ready to dodge. The other important mechanic of this phase is Silken Tomb, which roots all players and does a two yard AOE around them after a short delay. So you want to loosely group up here to allow you to quickly cleave these down and then use things like freedom effects wherever possible to instantly break those roots. On Heroic, these roots also leave behind web puddles for the duration of the phase, which means again, you want to position these close to existing area denial just to conserve space. You also want to keep an eye out for the web blade line attack, which spawn all over the platform for detonating for heavy nature damage to anyone in the path. This often overlaps with some of the other mechanics in the fight, so be aware. Outside of that, Anserac just deals constant ticking damage throughout this phase for healers to deal with. 
After pushing the boss below 35% or after two and a half minutes, phase one ends and the intermission begins. When this happened, the boss runs to the center of the room and casts predation, getting a large absorb shield and attaching threads to every player in the raid that do constant ticking damage. During this phase, if anyone ever gets within 12 yards of the boss, they get devoured, likely killing them, which is particularly dangerous when the rest cast happens, as this pulls all players in on top of doing damage to your raid. When this happens, you just want to create some space between you and the boss, or use abilities to prevent the pull-in effect. To make this more difficult, you won't have the full platform to work with here, as all the puddles that you created during phase 1 remain until the intermission ends, which is why the area denial and the space you use in that phase is so important. On heroic, players also pulse for damage to anyone within two yards, so you need to be lightly spread out. Other than this, the boss just stacks a paralyzing venom on your group over this phase, slowing players and increasing damage taken by rest by 20% per stack, adding a bit of a timer to how long you actually have to break your shield. This cast also shoots out waves that you need to avoid, so make sure you're on your toes, and use defensives on the rest cast later on in the phase when there's a big damage amp stacked up. After breaking the predation shield on the boss, you'll enter phase two, with the boss ascending to her upper platform, leaving you to fight through several adds to get to her. You need to divide your raid here evenly into two groups and split up, with each group taking one of the ascended void speaker adds that spawn on the north and south side of the platform. These mobs just have an interrupt in Shadow Blast and deal pulsing damage to nearby players, which on Heroic also shoots out orbs that you need to avoid. On death, these mobs will explode with a gloom eruption, leaving behind a puddle and knocking back all nearby players, which groups will want to use to shoot themselves off of the initial boss platform to the platforms directly behind where these adds spawn, allowing them to continue upwards towards where Queen Anserek has retreated to. On these new platforms, there are a few types of adds that you'll face, which starts with the Chamber Guardian and Expeller mobs. The Guardian mob needs to be picked up by the tank and just has a Tank Buster in Oust. This deals a mixed physical and shadow hit and has a knockback attached to it, so make sure you aren't pushed off the edge. Also, this spawns Swirlies, which all players need to avoid. The Expeller is a ranged mob that will occasionally teleport across the platform and shoot a beam through the center of it. Just avoid this line as it also knocks you back. After defeating these two adds, you can interact with nearby threads to form a bridge to the next platform, which spawns a bunch of skitter adds that tanks need to pick up. On Heroic, these mobs also apply a stacking damage taken debuff with their attacks, so make sure they are cleaved down in a timely manner. On this second platform, there's another Expeller mob, as well as a Devoted Worshipper. This Worshipper should be your group's priority, as it is attempting to cast Cosmic Apocalypse, which wipes your group if successful. All you need to do here is break the shield protecting this mob, and that cast ends. Though be aware, as it will constantly put out Gloom Touch Magic Dots onto two healers on your side, which on normal is just something you want to dispel quickly, but on Heroic, it will actually explode on being removed, so you want to dispel one of these quickly, heal your group up, and then dispel the second one once they're topped. After defeating the second platform of ads, again, you can interact with some thread to go to the third and final platform, which contains more skitterers, as well as a second ascended void speaker, which your group can kill and use to be knocked to the final boss platform above and begin phase three. Now, Queen Anzirik has not been ignoring you throughout phase two and will continue to harass players as they make their way towards her. Rest still happens in this phase, affecting one side at a time. So when it affects your side, make sure you move towards the far end of your current platform so you're not pulled off of it. She also occasionally debuffs random players with Acid Bolt, which is a nature hit and 30 second dot. So healers, beware, these players will need a bit more attention. Once both groups have made it to the top platform, you have a bit of free time here to damage the boss while she casts a big raid hit and then leads into phase three. Make sure you do regroup here with the other half of your raid to make use of stacked healing abilities in this phase as it has a ton of group damage. The tank combo has changed up a bit here, now starting with Infest, which is a mixed shadow and physical hit that explodes in a 15 yard AoE after 5 seconds, spawning several gloom hatchling mobs. These mobs just try and run straight towards Anserac, dealing raid damage and giving her a stacking damage buff if successful, so the debuff tank needs to run away here, and then your group should swap to these adds and use CCs, slows, stuns, all those things to stop them from getting to the boss while you cleave them down. Be aware that on Heroic, these mobs also leave behind puddles on death, so you want to make sure you drop them behind the boss instead of in the direction that you plan on rotating in. The second hit of the tank combo is Gorge, which comes shortly after Infest. It has six physical hits over the channel, which also increase physical damage taken. At the same time, each hit deals a burst of shadow damage to the raid, and then on Heroic, this damage increases based on the physical damage done, so it's very important here for tanks to use strong mitigation on this ability. The hits also spawn swirlies under random players, which turn into puddles on Heroic, so again, you want to make sure that your raid is not leading the boss here, as that can mean you run out of space quickly. 
because this ability has such a large damage amp attached to it as well the tank debuffed with infest needs to quickly make their way back to the boss after spawning the adds so they can taunt off after the gorge channel completes Following the tank buster, two players will be debuffed with Royal Condemnation, which is a hit of damage to your raid reduced by distance. On normal, these two players are free to run this out of the group, but on heroic, this also drops Royal Shackles on the ground when it expires, which creates tethers onto your raid that deal damage and slowly pull them in, ramping up in strength and stunning anyone that ever touches them. To end this effect, you are able to destroy them, so on Heroic, I actually recommend dropping these slightly in front of the boss to get some benefit from that damage fall off, but also making it easy to drag the boss just directly on top of them so that you can quickly cleave them down and end that effect. One of the more important mechanics of this phase is Abyssal Infusion, which debuffs two random players dealing a 10 yard AoE around them and creating conduits at their location which cause any player who touches one to teleport to the other. On a heroic, the spawn of these conduits also launches out several orbs that you should avoid. You want to make sure one player drops this near the center of the arena, while the other drops it towards the edge, as this will help you avoid the Frothing Gluttony ability. This ability is cast when Anserac gets to 100 energy, causing her to jump to the center of the arena and attempt to pull all players towards her with threads. This does instantly kill anyone, and this is a little bit bigger than the intermission, now with a 20 yard radius. At the same time, a ring of energy forms on the outer edge of the current platform and slowly closes in on you, so you want to make sure that your raid is positioned towards the inside of the platform, near that central abyssal conduit, and then you step inside as a group once the ring has passed over the outer conduit. On Heroic, all players explode in a 3 yard AoE around them after 5 seconds upon entering these portals, so you need to make sure that you quickly spread out, moving away from the conduits themselves as they also collapse shortly after. This collapse leaves behind a puddle as area denial on all difficulties, and on Heroic it shoots out more of those orbs that we mentioned earlier that your group needs to avoid. If you thought that was it, you would be wrong, as shortly after the first Frothing Gluttony cast completes, Anstrek will use Queen's Summon, spawning several acolytes in the center of the room that you will need to swap to. These mobs just spam cast the interruptible Null Detonation Raid hit, however initially they also have a Dark Barrier Shield on them, preventing any interrupt effects, so you need to make sure that you hit these mobs evenly to destroy their shields, allowing you to stop those casts. Outside of the spam cast damage, you're on a bit of a timer to kill these acolytes as if they're alive when the next Frothing Gluttony is cast, and Srik consumes them, wiping your group. On Heroic, when one of these adds is killed, it falls onto the platform and leaves behind its essence, which needs to be picked up by a player, as this will also wipe your group if the Frothing Gluttony ring hits it. The player carrying this essence gains a dot and causes any conduit they go through to immediately destabilize and remove this debuff, though this is handled by the previously mentioned strategy of just having your entire raid go through these conduits at the same time. After this debuff is removed, that player will get a vulnerability for 4 minutes, so if you're killing multiple ad sets, you need different sets of players to actually pick up those essences that they spawn. Outside of these new abilities, the boss keeps her web blade ability from phase 1, so be aware of those and make sure you are dodging. Otherwise, she just deals constant ticking damage, which increases each time Abyssal Conduits is cast. This also acts as a timer for this phase, as the fourth cast of Frothing Gluttony will fill the platform with Gloom, wiping your raid. But there we have it guys, Queen Anserac on normal and heroic difficulty. Hopefully this helps you and your group get ahead of the curve. And if it does, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like it, including Mythic Raid Guides coming very soon, and many Mythic Plus Guides and Root Walkthroughs, some of which are already up on my channel. Otherwise, thank you as always to my amazing Patreons for their support, and I'll see everyone in the next video.